समझ पा रही बसमिल्लाम नहमद हूँ रसूल हिल करीम अम्मा बद فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما محمد إلا رسول قد خلت من قبله الرسل وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الدنيا ملعونة ملعون ما فيها إلا ذكر الله وما والاه وعالما أو متعلما أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين My dearest respected elders brothers friends mothers and sisters listening at home in the capacity of an alim you get to listen to many individuals of different ages different genders throughout the year and i have no doubt that your imams in particular in the capacity of an imam and an alim they get to witness and listen to many many individuals majority of the time in fact i would say 9 out of 10 times when a person wants to come and speak to you it is out of frustration despair anxiety many a times is because they've lost the will to live and time after time you having to listen to this and the causes they vary and this year in particularly more than ever before we've seen that the causes the the spectrum is just wide individuals who cannot comfort themselves because they've lost a loved one or because of spousal issues marital problems parental problems friendship problems so the causes they vary and many a times you think to yourself that ya allah this person has come to you or you've witnessed something how do you console such a person How do you give comfort to such a person? Think to yourself, how how are you going to give comfort to a young child by telling him that your father is never going to walk through your doors ever again? He's never going to come home again. How do you comfort such a child? Or that husband who's trying his level best to make his marriage work but it's just not happening. that father who's trying his level best to have access to his own biological children and it's as though he is fighting a war it's just not happening or that friend who feels betrayed by his own and he's having sleepless nights and he's thinking to himself that my own friend has betrayed me how do you give comfort to such people Then you think to yourself the hadith of Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam that truly ad dunya mal'unatun mal'un ma fiha that this world is cursed everything that's in this world is also cursed but you go and say these words to a youngster it means nothing the prophet has said this world is cursed everything that's in this world is also cursed it means nothing my respected brothers in islam there is only one method of seeking comfort tragedy upon tragedy upon tragedy will come and inevitably it is going to come there is only one source of comfort and that is through the seerah of our beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that nabi of allah for whom the entire universe has been created 
with regards to whom they say ka annaka kad khulikta kama tasha'u that he sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is as though he designed his own being if we look into the seerah of our beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then we witness that not one tragedy after the other multiple tragedies at the same time came upon the best of all human beings not just the best of all human beings sayyidul anbiya the leader of all the prophets we witness one tragedy after the other multiple tragedies at the same time why so that me and you today in this world we can seek comfort from the seerah of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is the only reason why otherwise why would allah put nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam through tragedies and tragedies is for me and you we witness that before he was born his father had passed away at the age of 6 his mother passes away mother and father both gone at a tender age of 6 at a tender age of 6 and then he is taken into the care of his grandfather abdul muttalib my friends those who know know that many a times the bond between grandparents and grandchildren is far greater than that of parents and children yet allah decides that no this nabi has not come for himself he's come to give comfort until the day of judgment at the age of 10 allah decides that this grandfather abdul muttalib is also going to go heartbreak after heartbreak one after the other and then we see and this is just deaths i'm talking about he gets married to khadija tul kubra radiyallahu ta'ala anha abu talib is looking after nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam two individuals and this year has been dubbed as amul huzn the year of grief abu talib my respected brothers in islam he shielded the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam like no one else when the enemies wanted to hurt nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was a means of security abu talib and nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam were very very close together very close and yet at the most important juncture in the life of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he needed his uncle the most when he needed his uncle the most allah decides that no this nabi has come until the day of judgment allah decides that abu talib is also going to leave this world my friends not just that imagine the heartbreak of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam those parents who are having parental problems who are making dua day and night for their child and they think to themselves why is it not working abu talib allah decides that he leaves this world as a disbeliever he does not recite the shahada so much so that allah instructs nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam that for your beloved uncle you cannot make dua in maghfirat for your own uncle imagine the heart pain and soon after very very soon after allah decides that abu talib looked after all the external affairs internal affairs khadija tul kubra in some riwayat it comes that it was only few days after and in some it comes after two three months later he's not passed the grieving process of his uncle and yet allah decides that this nabi has come until the day of judgment khadija tul kubra she also passes away my respected brothers in islam why why if we do not have our sight on seerah then we are going to be miserable we are going to be depressed we are going to be mentally disturbed we are going to have sleepless nights but when we look at the seerah of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam we feel that if this happened to the best of all human beings the best of all human beings then we are nothing this my respected brothers in islam have painted a picture for those who passed away in the personal life of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam we're not even talking about the persecution of the sahaba or about the society this is all personal matters of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know family problems as those parents who unfortunately have had to witness their children or their relations or relatives or nephews and nieces go through divorce how painful it is how difficult it is 
My respected brothers in Islam, Allah decided that this Nabi's seerah is going to be complete, absolute complete. The problem with us is that when we listen to Sira, we think that it happened 1400 years ago. We think it's a history lesson. Sira is no history lesson. It's a live documentary for me and you. Every incident of Sira is a live documentary for me and you. Not one but two daughters of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were divorced. Two daughters. Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha, Umm Kulthum radiallahu ta'ala anha. And not just divorced by any individuals, not for mat uh, worldly matters. They got divorced because of their iman. Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anna got divorced by her own relation. By her own relation. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is having to witness all this. On one side he's preaching for those parents or for those individuals who think that are my sins, I'm being punished for my sins. Yes, this happens at times. But it's not always the case. Many, many individuals, they are killing themselves internally because they think that a tragedy has befallen them because of their sins. It's not always the case. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was masum. He had no sin to his name. Yet look at the tragedies in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This very same Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha, my respected brothers in Islam, especially for those who have experienced loss in 2020 and 2021, the battle of Badr, it was the most exciting time by the end. Why? Because Sahaba, they witnessed something which they had never witnessed before. Victory, 313 against a thousand. Yom al-Furqan, Yom al-Takal Jam'an. Allah mentions this in the Quran. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he saw with his own eyes that angels were descending and they were fighting on behalf of the Sahaba Ikiram. And it was an Iman booster moment. A moment when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the Badriyin are people of paradise. They were happy. There was so much beauty to distribute. A moment of excitement, thrill, buzz. And yet Allah decides that, Oh Muhammad, you have not come for 1400 years ago. You have come until the day of judgment. On one side, the battle of Badr takes place where there is so much joy by the end of it. And on the other side, Allah decides that that very same Ruqayya, his daughter who he had to witness being divorced, she passes away during the lifetime of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya Allah, is it not enough? Mother has gone, father has grown, grandfather has gone, uncle has gone, wife has gone. And now Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha goes. My friends, don't just listen to this as seerah. For those who could not be with their loved ones at the time of death, you have fulfilled the seerah and sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not present with her loved one, with his own daughter at the time when she passed away. He was not there. In fact, the hadith mentions that by the time Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam returned, the janazah of Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha had already taken place. Tragedy after tragedy, multiple tragedies at the same time. So we've talked about death, we've talked about fine problems within the house. When you look at financial problems, youngsters who are killing themselves again because they think that they're having financial problems. That very same Nabi for whom the companions were ready to give their lives. Angels were at his disposal. Allah was at his disposal. Yet the Sahaba, they say, we witnessed Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hunchback. He could not walk straight due to hunger. And this is Sayyidul Anbiya, my respected brothers in Islam. Sayyidul Anbiya. For those friends, you know, sometimes you get youngsters who come and they've got girlfriend problems. Now, you know what? She's not replying or this and that and I feel suicidal and I feel... My respected brothers in Islam, these are not problems. We've not realized what problems are. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was also depressed at the time. The hadith is mentioning this. So much so that when revelation stopped coming to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there was a moment of time where Allah momentarily sees revelation coming to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My friend Sira says, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he stopped this, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became so depressed. He became so ill that at times he felt suicidal. He felt suicidal. He used to go on to the top of the mountains and he thought to himself that you know what? That because the loved, 
The love that he had for Allah and communication stopped. Youngsters, your problem should be if your parents are not talking to you. When this communication stopped, Jibreel السلام, had to come and comfort Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why did this happen? Why? Why would Allah want to stop revelation? On one side, Allah stops revelation and you think this problem is enough on its own. And on the other side, you've got the likes of um, uh, the wife of Abu Lahab who comes to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and mocks at him and says that it seems that the shaitan that has possessed you has now left you. Two wars at the same time. One mentally, that revelation is not coming and the other one having to deal with the wife of Abu Lahab and others. Tragedy after tragedy. My respected brothers in Islam, it does not stop here. Those very same people who the Sahaba and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, remember this is all personal life. I've not even branched out onto deen and other matters. Those very same people where someone would come acting as though that they are kherka and in favor of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, presenting food only to know that that food has got black magic in it. Those very same people who came as though they were friends of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam turned out to be hypocrites in the battle of Uhud. Not one, not two, not three. They go out, strong army. Not one, not two, not three, but 300 individuals. They return back to Medina and they do not accommodate Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yet they said that they are re reciting the Shahada. So when we feel betrayed, and if we do not understand seerah, we are going to be miserable. We are going to lose sleep. We are going to feel depressed. My respected brothers in Islam, Wallah, I'm telling you this seerah of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, it's not a fairy tale. And it's not a history lesson. And unless and until we read seerah in light that Allah is giving me and you a remedy to each and every single problem. Youngsters who are having problems at home, I was speaking to an alim and we were talking and the alim said that you know what it seems that the virus and the pandemic is not just with the virus it seems the problem the pandemic is in the homes as well between husband and wives look at sira look at sira nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself he had problems with his wives and these wives these sahabi yeah, they weren't normal people they were ummahatul mu'minin Chosen by Allah to get married to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So much so the problems were such that the Sahaba feared that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has divorced his wives. So much so that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made a qasam that I am not going to talk to my wives for a month. So much so that Allah mentions this incident in the Quran. That, O oh, Nabi, kulli azwajik, say to your wives that if you want worldly resources, then you are free to go. Otherwise, if you want to stay with me, then you will have to live with what I have. And if you think this is enough, this tragedy is enough, then my respected brothers in Islam, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, no doubt your imams have already told you about this incident. His own wife, Forget what she went through. I, we don't have time from what Aisha radiallahu ta'ala has experiences. But that very same Nabi who's had to experience everything had to witness the people of Medina make an accusation against the most beloved wife of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ummahatul Mu'mineen Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, that na'udhu billah she's been engaged in illegal and haram relationship with another sahabi. Can you imagine the heartbreak of Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Ya Allah, I am the Nabi. I am the one for whom you've created everything. I am the one who is Hadi. I am the one who has come here for hidayah and to preach to others. And I am having to deal with this own problem in my own house where people are, you know, disbelievers, they were enjoying themselves. Hypocrites, they were merrymaking. But Sahaba, Sahaba who were, you know, they had Iman to their core. Even some of the Sahaba were doubting this. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had to deal with all this. And do you know what Quran says? The Quran after mentioning this whole incident, it says that you know what? This incident, it's not bad for you. Bal huwa khairul lakum. In fact, it is good for you. Ya Allah, you know, having to witness such an incident and the Quran is saying this is good for you? My respected brothers in Islam summarize everything. 
everything from beginning to end. Individuals who have passed away in the life of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His financial problems, his marital problems, accusations, friendship problems, and the list will continue and continue and continue, my respected brothers in Islam, tragedy after tragedy after tragedy. Consider this to be an introduction to the bayan, because what I am about to say next is the conclusion and the lesson we all need to take from this. The heartbreak of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of losing individuals. You know, there are mothers and fathers who have lost their children during the pandemic. There are husbands and wives who have lost individuals. Young children who have lost their parents. And people for whom marriages have been broken and so much more. People who have lost their businesses. It seems that 2020, 2021, just one year, and yet Sira has given us the solution to all these problems. Because despite everything that happened in the Prophet Wasallam's life, when the Sahaba, they say, and describe the character of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they say, Da'im al-Bishri, that he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was forever smiling. Forever smiling. And this is the lesson that we are content with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That despite everything that's happened, they say, Da'im al-Bishri, Laysa bi fazzin wa la ghalizin wa la sakhabin fil aswaq. That he wasn't quarrelsome, he was lenient just because he's had a bad day in the office or at work, he comes home and then lashes out to his wife and children. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, despite everything that was going on in his life, we think to ourselves we are busy. We think that the calamity has befallen us. Just look at Sirah. And my respected brothers in Islam, if you want to fulfill the sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then on the reaction of a tragedy, we will have to smile. We will have to smile. Because if you smile, that is an indication you are happy with the will of Allah. If you smile, you are following the sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if you are following the sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Kana ma'iya fil jannah, that person is going to be with me in paradise. This is taqdeer. And my respected brothers in Islam, the month of Ramadan has come for taqwa. And everything that's happening, there is no person, if it happened to the best of all human beings. You know, many, many individuals. I've had to witness so many individuals this year. And people are thinking to themselves that, why me? Why me? Why not you? If it happened to the best of all human beings, why not you? If it happened to Sayyidul Anbiya, why not you? The solution is simple. Understand Sira. Take comfort from Sira. Understand and implement it. Da'im al-Bishri. Smile. Why? Because you are happy with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then this tragedy is no longer a tragedy. You are going to be amongst the people who are the most closest to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannah inshallah. So my respected brothers in Islam, I conclude here. For those who are having sleepless nights, for those who are feeling depressed, for those who feel that they are mentally not stable, for those who are having issues relationship-wise and so forth, what more difficult can there be than the fact that what he stopped on Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, than the fact that the accusation was happening to his own wife. Take comfort from Sira. It is magical. It's got power. It's got power to heal. And only if you understand it, it's a live documentary for me and you today. We will be able to benefit from the lessons of Sira. Amin ya rabbal alameen wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. You know, I'm very, very conscious of time, okay? I, I generally don't even like to go over one minute, and I, can't, I don't even know how much time there's left. But khair, brothers in Islam, I am going to conclude here. The reason why I'm going to conclude here is because this moment in time which we've got now, whether it's five minutes left or ten minutes left until Maghrib Salah, we have almost finished the days of forgiveness. And wallah, we do not know whether we have been forgiven or not. Okay, you know, it's easy to listen to Bayan and I think I could have summarized everything. The lesson which I wanted to give, I think I've given. Engage in dua, engage in shukr. Shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you are here, if your loved ones are here, then do shukr. If you are in your mid-twenties, thirties, forties, fifties, we've witnessed in our own town and city, all different ages leave this world because of the pandemic. 
if you are here, then utilize this. You know, we were talking the other day about Hazrat Mulan Abdul Mu'min Sab Nomani Rahmatullahi Alayhi. Right? Who would have thought, Mulan Talha, would we have ever thought to ourselves that we are going to be attaching the words Rahmatullah Alayhi to his name? So fit and healthy he was after iftar, he used to go for walk. I used to tell him, Mulana, you know what, there is early tarawih in Madrasa building, please let me go. Because he used to like walking so much. And yet look, they've gone. And they've gone as martyrs. And our full yakin is that they've gone as martyrs. And if we've been given this opportunity here now, right now, engage in shukr because there is so much to be thankful about despite everything that's happened. And secondly, my respected brothers in Islam, the Mu'takifin are going to be sitting in Atikaf. I request the Mu'takifin, you know, I was talking to our Satis yesterday, that if you think about it, the pressure that should be on the Mu'takifin should be far greater than ever before. If you look at the situation of the world, majority of the world will not be able to accommodate the Mu'takifin. In Haramain, in Medina, Munawwara alone, so many hundreds of people used to sit for Sunnah Atikaf, they cannot sit. Places like India, Pakistan, we know there is lockdown, people will not be able to sit. Places like Turkey and so forth. And even in our own country, we know that, you know, so many masajid have restricted etikaf. So for those individuals that are sitting in etikaf, sunnat etikaf, you need to think to yourself that my ratio is one between thousands. And the du'as that you need to make for collectively, for us, for our community, for the entire ummah, should be far greater than ever before. So my friends, these few minutes that we've got, make shukar, wholeheartedly make shukar. If your father is still here, make shukar that you can have that conversation with him. If your mother is still here, make shukar that you can still have that conversation. If your children are still here, if your neighbors are still here, make shukar to Allah. That, oh Allah, despite everything that's gone, many people have left. But you have given me the ability to speak to my father. Youngsters, I know youngsters who are regretting the fact that they did not get the opportunity to speak to their father before they passed away. If you've got that opportunity, seize that opportunity. Make shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we do not know what's coming around. We do not know what's coming around. And secondly, as the days of istighfar finish, my friends, wholeheartedly make tawbah. Make tawbah to Allah for all the sins, not just for yourself, collectively for the ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the correct understanding. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the correct vision of seerah, give us the power to understand seerah, and give us the tawfiq to heal from the comfort of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's life. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.
بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اللہ قسم تو وبی کا آمن تو و علیہ کا توکل تو و علیہ رزق کا افطر تو